What's the word, y'all? It has been some time since I've reacted to a trade article on the Bleach Report app. So today is the day. Link's in the description. Uh, go to Spotify and download my podcast, baby. Uh, number two in sports. And I want to get number one. So download the podcast. Link is in the description. Only on Spotify right now. But we'll be on Apple Podcasts in, in a few days. All right, Greg. Let's see what you got, my boy. Because I, I don't really know what to expect. <laughs> All right, let me keep it a buck. Someone tweeted at me the link to this article and I didn't click it. And they said, Kenny, you'll enjoy this. And I'm assuming now that I see that the first trade is dealing with the Bulls, that that's why they sent it to me. Let's see what the trade is. Tyus Jones answers the Bulls point guard problems, which is funny because uh, during the play-in games, I was asked by Taylor Rooks who the Bulls need. And instead of saying like LeBron or Giannis or whatever, I, I said this. Exactly what you're saying, the Bulls. Tyus Jones. Ooh. Oh! Get Tyus Jones to Chicago Ooh. ASAP. I Ooh. actually. So let's see if the trade is right. It is Tyus Jones and Corey Kisper for Patrick Williams, Daylon Terry in a 2026 second round pick. Oh boy. Again, I love Tyus Jones, as you see in that, that video with me, Rooks and, and Fry. But the price of Patrick Williams is a little bit too rich for my blood. I'm not ready to give up on Patrick Williams yet, man. I, I can't be the only one. Maybe I am. I'm not ready to give up on him on a plug-and-play point guard. Tyce Jones is, what, 27, 28 years old. I'm not saying he's, he's not capable of getting better. But I just think that Patrick Williams is going to be really good. And he has only a couple years under his belt. He's still only 21 years old. I know he's got three years technically, but it, it may feel like he's older. He's 21, and he just shot 40% from three with good defense. I believe that he can turn into more. So I'm not trading him for Tyus Jones right now. Even though we desperately need point guard play, I just feel like this will be going all in on this super old core. And one of the young bright spots that we have, the pretty much only young bright spot that we have is Patrick Williams. And I, I'm not giving that up, at least not for Tyus Jones. I mean, for right, it's not, I'm not saying that Patrick Williams should be untouchable, but I'm just saying not for Tyus Jones. So 0 for 1 for me personally. I can see a world where some people like this deal. Uh, maybe they don't believe in Patrick Williams as much as I do. But it would be weird to give up Patrick Williams in last year's first round pick, even though DT in summer league, year two summer league, hasn't looked that good. Uh, next, we get the Knicks ad shooting. It is Bogdanovich for Evan Fournier and a 2024 top 10 protected pick via the Knicks. I mean, Bogdanovich has been on the block the block for some time now. And obviously, he just had an amazing, amazing season. He's a little bit older than what most people probably expect. What is he, 35, 34, 35 years old? But for the Knicks, this is kind of a no-brainer, if you ask me, because I would expect them to have another successful season where this pick is the 19th overall pick or something along those lines. And you just, you feel okay with giving up the 19th overall pick to add a player that helps you in one of your weaker spots. If I'm the Detroit Pistons, I mean, they've been holding out on Bogdanovich for some time. There was rumored that they won a first round pick. And this is a real one. It's not one of them uh, top 25 protected and, and it gets turned into two seconds after. If this is like a legitimate first round pick, so be it. And it opens up some opportunities for some of your younger players like Isaiah Livers or something like that. I don't hate it, but I could see a world where Pistons fans do. The third trade is going to be a, a Hawks acquire Raptor star. Huh. What's the definition of that word? I don't know. It's not named Pascal Siakam. So it's OG Adenobi for AJ Griffin, DeAndre Hunter, a first round pick and two second round picks. Whoa. That's that's a not a maybe not a lot. Maybe I'm just really high on AJ Griffin. Similar thing where I said with Patrick. I mean, AJ is going into a second season. So and, and, and the minutes that he was given and felt like he made the most of it, he hit a game winner against my Bulls this season. But it felt like there was times within the season where he would get the rotational minutes and he's a right place, right time type player where defensively, offensively, he just finds his spots and he makes it work. He had times we was heavily in a the rotation, then had times we was out of the rotation completely. I just OG Adenobi is really, really good. But there's also rumors that OG wants the ball in his hands more. So you're going to trade him to a team that already has Trey Young, who's a high usage player, and then DeJounte Murray, who's also a high usage player. This is just relegating OG to do the same thing he's doing in Toronto, which he might not be really excited about. Also, OG Ananobi, last year of his contract. So are we trading sophomore year AJ Griffin? We're trading DeAndre Hunter, who at this point, I can understand why you would trade him Atlanta Hawks. A lot of money left on the deal, and he hasn't blossomed. He had that one playoff game where they were getting eliminated. You're like, oh, he's going to come back next season. He's going to be kind of fine. He wasn't. <laughs> so you, you're adding all of this plus a first-round pick that is via the Kings, um, a part of the Kevin Herter deal, for OG, and it might be a one-year rental. 
I don't love it. But if I'm the Raptors and I'm saying that, hey, we have to trade OG, we have to, this is not a bad package. A.J. Griffin, again, projects to be really good in this league. DeAndre Hunter, again, a lot of years and a lot of money left in that contract, but maybe you can untap something that hasn't been there. And then an extra first-round pick is always good, even if it is the Kings, um, with them being a solid, really good NBA team. The starting lineup is intriguing, though, on paper, with it being Trey Young, DeJounte Murray, Sadiq Bey, OG Ananobi, and Clint Capella. That's, that's not too bad. They just have to figure out more offensive stuff um, between these two dudes and how do we figure it out completely. Quinn Snyder is now going to have a full opportunity, a full offseason to really work on that. Um, and I guess we'll see. Cat creates big three in Dallas. The Wolves build around Anthony Edwards. So this is Carl Anthony Towns in exchange for Christian Wood on the sign and trade. This matters to me because you can't just say sign and trade and not tell me what that contract looks like because are we tying big money, okay money to him? I don't know. Tim Hardaway Jr. and Jaden Hardy, Jaden Hardy, and one unprotected first round pick. Ugh. We've talked about this on this channel before that if the Timberwolves feel like this core collection of guys of Anthony Edwards, Rudy Gobert, and Carl Anthony Towns isn't going to do the big thing, spoiler alert, it probably isn't good enough to do the big thing, then you're going to have to make a significant move. And I promise you, you're not trading Ant Man, especially not after that extension. Congratulations. You're not going to trade Rudy Gobert because you're not going to get the value that you've given up for him. And he looked worse this season than last season, let's be real. So his value is already lower than what it was when you traded for him. I would argue that his value wasn't that high, the price he paid, or whatever, whatever. So which means that if you want to make a splash, you want to make a, a substantial change to your organization, it's going to be Carl Anthony Towns. And is this the, this is the trade package that they thinking? Christian Wood, who there's a, re, there's a reason why Christian Wood is still on the market right now. Obviously, he's a really talented offensive player, but there's a lot to be desired on the other side of the ball. There's rumors about some locker room stuff. I'm, I'm not in the locker room, so I can't attest to that at all. But I'm just saying as watching him, He's a, he can go out for 30, but he can also be a revolving door. Um, so I don't love that, especially if we sign and trade him. Maybe the sign and trade is just for this season. And so you're saying that we basically trade in Car Anthony Towns for one first round pick and Jaden Hardy, who might be good. Because Tim Hardaway Jr. is a good player, but we think in th two years, three years down the line, he's not on the roster. I don't love this package if I'm the Minnesota Timberwolves. And, and if we're saying this is how low Carl Anthony Towns' value has got across the association, I'm okay with just keeping him on the team and let him rehabilitate that trade value. If this is the – I'm cool with this team being a 40-win team every season, a 42-win team every season. If this is the trade package I get in return for Carl Anthony Towns, who just four years ago was voted by the – or maybe that was six years ago – voted by the coaches and GMs across the league as the guy – to build your organization around. I'm not trading that man for this. Of course, a lot has changed over the years, but man, that's, I hate that package. But if you're saying the Wolves want to do this, hell, I would do this in a heartbeat if I'm the Magic, I'm the Mavericks. Yeah, the defense ain't going to be good between Luka, Kyrie, and Towns, but the offense going to be OD. Hanging out with my nephew too much, saying OD and stuff. The last trade is the Lillard trade. It is Dame. It is Marcus Morris going to the Miami Heat. The Clippers receive James Harden and P.J. Tucker. The 76ers get Tyler Hero, Caleb Martin, and Robert Covington is back. And then two first round, oh, sorry, two second round picks from the Heat. And then the Trailblazers get two unprotected first round picks from Miami. Uh, two unprotected first round picks from the Clippers. They get Larry, Batum, Jovich, Kobe Brown as well. Wow. He just, I think he just had a 30 piece today. I ain't watching Summer League no more, but I think he just had a 30 piece. Amir Coffey and Jason Preston, who's been really solid in Summer League as well. This is a huge, huge trade. And I mentioned before, I am not in the business of talking Damian Lillard trades until it's done. Every day there is a new rumor that's saying this and saying that. I'm ready for it to happen if it is going to happen. So for that reason... I don't have an opinion. Uh, other than getting a real four first-round picks for Damian Lillard feels cool if I'm the Blazers. You don't get any, as of right now, like up-and-coming talent. So it's really just exchanging Dame for draft capital. And maybe you believe in Jovic. And maybe you believe in Brown. And maybe you believe in Amir Kofi or something. The 76ers end up with Tyrese Halliburton, Tyrese Maxey, and uh, Tyler Hero. Oof. I'm, not, I'm, that's all, I'm not really ready to talk about it. Uh, I love trade articles. I love trade articles but at the end, because at the end of the day, a polarizing trade means that you're doing something right. And I think a lot of these trades are polarizing.